Uh, yeah, yeah, we can take some questions. I'd love to take some questions. Uh, absolutely. You guys have been kind of quiet this time. But yeah, let's take some questions. Have we talked about BL Heli 15.5, 14.5 at all? Uh, no. So uh, if you have a specific question, go for it. But um, BL Heli 14.5. So here's what happened. Uh, while they were working on BL Heli S, which is a new hardware design for ESCs that will run a new firmware, the main thing that BL Heli S will bring to the table is, I believe all, I think all BL Heli S ESCs will have a hardware PWM driver, which is basically a chip that makes the signal that is output to the motors instead of having a microprocessor do it in software. That's the one way to put it. It's smoother, basically. And that's one of the things that KISS ESCs have that differentiates them. I think they're the only ESC currently on the market that has a hardware PWM driver. I could be wrong about that, but I think that's the case. Um, so BL Heli S is a new ESC design from BL Heli that will have that kind of thing. It seems like BL Heli S, my feeling is that, it, my impression is that it's specifically designed to compete with KISS. We'll see. Um, but while they were working on the code for BL Heli 14.5, they like redid the commutation math and it made the motors run a lot smoother even if you were back on a regular BL Heli ESC. So that was rolled back into BL Heli 14.5. If you go to BL Heli 14.5, you, I found, I'm running the little B 20 amp ESCs, the standard little Bs, not the little B Pro. Uh, I found that my motors sounded way smoother. It's really hard to explain until you hear it. You say smoother and you might be like, well, what does that really mean? You hear it in the air and it's really smooth and it's really nice. Um, there's a roughness in the motors that you don't know is there until it's gone. And then you're like, oh, so it's way smoother. And they also changed the way calibration works. There's, there used to be a 20 microsecond uh, dead band in the top end when you did throttle calibration. And that's that top end throttle calibration that I talked about in a video on my channel to, to take that back out again. Well, they got rid of it. They were like, okay, clearly people don't like this. They got rid of it. So now, well, the calibration is still a little weird. It seems like the calibration now runs super high. Like if you calibrate with a max throttle of 1980, you may get a calibrated top end in the ESC of like 2000 or even 2010, which is kind of weird. But, but basically as long as you calibrate and you calibrate below the max value, which is 2020, I feel like you're fine. Um, so that's BL Heli 14.5. Some people have reported problems. Uh, demagnet Some people have reported that their copter drops out of the air and they had to turn DMAG from low to high when they didn't have to do that on 14.4. Some people have reported a small redu uh, reduction in top end power. I don't know if they had it on a thrust stand, but they just felt like there was a reduction in top end power with BL Heli 14.5. Some people have actually gone back to 14.4 uh, to get that back. They would rather have more power than more smoothness. The smoothness is really, you think, well, what's a little roughness if I have more power? But the smoothness is really nice. It's really pleasant to fly. Very pleasant, very confidence inspiring. Um, um, and some people, yeah, so some people are having some issues with 14.5. Uh, either DMAG or desync issues, or, uh, or 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 maybe that reduction in power, and are going back to fourteen four. Other people aren't. Since they are on the bell, do they get affected by the heating factor of passing the current in the winding? That's a good question. The current is moving through the winding. The current sets up a magnetic field. Does the magnetic field, does current flow through the bell? I don't know the answer to that. I don't know the answer to that. I don't know if the mo motors, if the uh, the magnets are heated by the current passing. Uh, I'm going to hold off on answering that. I have a hunch. I, if I had, if you offered me a million dollars to guess, I could lay odds, but I don't know. If, I don't Since no one's offering me a million dollars to make an educated guess, I'm not going to. I'm just going to say I don't know. Um, I will say this though, you know, the heat, they're, they're affected by hot air moving over the, the poles, right? And if the poles get hot, the magnets are pretty close to the poles, the magnets will heat up too, even if current isn't moving through them. I'm about to run RCX 2205 2633 KVs. Yay, that's what I'm running too. 
I'm running that. Currently, actually, both of the copters I have flying right now are running those motors. Uh, so that's, yeah, my, my current top motor. DYS XM30A, which firmware would you suggest? Well, you can't run BL Heli S. You can't run BL Heli S. That's not an option because BL Heli S is a whole new hardware design. So you just like uh, you, you can't run BL Heli on a Simon Cat, on an Atmel ESC with no external oscillator, right? If you don't have an external oscillator on the ESC, you cannot run BL Heli on it, period. You need that hardware. It has to be there. BL Heli S has hardware requirements. And there are no ESCs that you can buy right now that will run BL Heli S. They haven't hit the market yet. So BL Heli S is off the table. Would you suggest multi-shot or BL Heli? Um, pardon me. Uh, so I haven't flown multi-shot yet, but I posted a video to uh, my Facebook page that I think you may find interesting, which is from RS2K, who he's a developer of Multishot, and it shows the reaction time for Multishot uh, and a test that he uses to test the smoothness of, of his ESCs. And he says that with Multishot, the ESCs are smoother. So it seems like Multishot is better than one shot. So if you have the option to use multi-shot and you want the ultimate in responsiveness, then you should be running multi-shot. Um, there's some people ask, you know, what is the minimum pulse that the motor can actually like respond to, right? Because uh, ultimately we can change the signal going into the ESC as fast as we want, but the motor can only spin up and spin down. It's like a physical object with a prop on the end pushing air out of the way. It can only spin up and spin down so fast, right? So there's an argument that past a certain pulse length is just not a point in going faster. And I don't have any conclusions to tell you right now, but I can tell you, and this is public information, that uh, Quad McFly is doing some very interesting research into that question and has posted some stuff to RC groups suggesting that he, he could detect a change in the motor's thrust with as little as like a 10 microsecond pulse. Was it microsecond? I think it was microsecond. He detected a very small change in the motor's thrust with even very, very short pulses. And so the data is not in yet and his conclusions are not in yet, but there is some, the, the hints of some evidence that motors can respond to much shorter pulses than it seems like they ought to. And it seems like we thought that they ought to. And so the argument that, well, how could multi-shot make any difference? One shot is already faster than the motors can respond. That may not be true. I would say if you can run multi-shot versus one shot, go ahead and do it. Um, but if you can't run it, like it's not the end of the world, your copter will still fly pretty good. <clears throat> what timing would you recommend? For the 2630, for these, because I've used these specific motors, I can tell you I run them on medium high. Uh, medium is fine. Uh, I feel like they're a little bit smoother on medium high. I have never had a desync issue. Uh, and you're running the, the uh, XM30s, which is an F390 ESC, I believe. And you should have even less of a problem than me. I found with my little B20s uh, that medium high seemed like it was a little better. I didn't bother going to high just because I feel like there's seldom... High is pretty extreme. And, and I didn't have anything really indicating that I needed to go to high. Maybe they would be even better in high, but I'm happy on medium high. That's where I'm at. You're having chirping without DMAG high on 14.5. Um, yeah, well, maybe you need to go to DMAG high, or maybe you need to go back to 14.4. Okay. Okay. Great. Yeah, that's, that's good questions. Thank you. Keep them coming.